Not too long ago, somebody left a comment on one of my videos asking me if I could clone the Google Fonts theme toggle thingy, uh, sun moon thing that they have. And I took a look at it and noticed there's a lot of fun things going on with it. So in this video, we're going to be doing exactly that. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that you're here for this video and if you are new here and you don't already know, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And in this video we're going to be doing a lot of CSS and a little fair bit of JavaScript as well. People are always asking me for more JavaScript content so we're going to cover a little bit of it in this video because we need it for some of the functionality. Because not only do I want to make the sun move back and forth but we might as well get it working with our dark theme and light theme and doing all of that at the same time. So for this one, I see this as a bit of a challenge to myself. It's something that whenever we're cloning something, it's like, how can I do that? Can I replicate all the different things going on in there? And to start off with, the first thing we need is an SVG to work with. So I just fired up uh, Illustrator here and made the, the SVG. I had to play around with it a little bit to get the shape that I wanted, but uh, it went pretty well to be able to replicate it. It's simple enough. If you don't have Illustrator, you could do the same thing uh, with like Inkscape and there's other vector softwares out there that you could use as well that are free. And the nice thing with Illustrator. I don't know about those other ones, but you can just literally hit uh, copy and then go into VS Code and paste it and it pastes it as an SVG with everything you need there. Now I did also do a little bit of work on my HTML and CSS before we're going to dive into the tutorial side here just because, you know, it's really basic things that I did just to set it up in the middle of the page and link my CSS file basically. Um, and with that, I think we're, we're ready to dive in and see if we can figure out how to clone everything uh, with that thing because th there's a lot going on with the toggle. We have the different animations, different speeds, the pulsing thing that seems to be going on with it. There's a lot of different elements in here to try and get working, plus the whole light mode, dark mode, and all of that as well. All right, so we've sort of got things set up now. I, so I've just centered everything on the screen. I added a bit of text. And another thing I did is I wrapped my SVG in a button. And I did put the ID on the button itself because it's the button is our toggle and our SVG is just what we can click on. Um, now, I was going to do this off screen too, but I think it's an important one to do on screen, which is if you have a button that is like this, uh, with, that has no text in it, you do want to come in with an area label. And we're actually going to do some interesting things with this area label um, as we go through. So let's do switch, switch to dark theme. Because when we click on it, that's what we want to happen. We want it to switch over to a dark theme. And I'm using, this is, um, if we look at Google, you know what, I have it in the other window, but let's go over now to this one just so we can go back and forth between our two tabs. Um, and see how we get that um, tool tip that comes up. So we're going to use that here too. And let's do switch like that. Um, so we can take advantage of this area label too, I think, to be able to get that little thing to come up on there. And we're in a new browser. Let's zoom in. Cool. So we're off and running, except right now uh, the sun, um, when we're in dark mode, we see this because it's showing us a sun because it's saying if you click this, you'll get the sun or you'll get your light mode or light theme. And then like this, it's showing us the dark one because when you click on it, we're going to that. So I guess the first thing we need to do is move that over. So that is my toggle circle right there. And so we can come down here and say that my, and you could do all of this nested in theme toggle if you wanted to. Um, the specificity wouldn't cause any issues, uh, but we'll say toggle circle. And I think we just want to do a transform, uh, translate, translate of what, negative 50%? Does that make sense? Translate X, X, yeah. Translate X of negative 50 way too much, negative <laughs> 20. It's, it's shooting outside my SVG right now. Negative um, 15. And let's leave that right there, but we can just shrink this window down a little bit. Um, just so we can keep that in view all the time. There we go. So I think that actually looks pretty good. Maybe we've even moved it over a bit too much, or maybe my circle could have been a little bit bigger to match it exactly, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I like my moon. So we're gonna stick with it like that. And um, so there's a few things that we need to be able to do. Uh, we need to be able to spin the outside and move the inner thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just focus more on the CSS side of things before we worry about the functionality. Cause you'll see like when I do this, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, and so when I hover on top, actually, you know what? Theme toggler, um, we're gonna come on this. And I'm hoping this works in the dark mode too. We'll see, opacity of 0.7 maybe. Um, Cause see how it's grayed out? And then when you hover on top, it, it comes in and we get a background that comes on it. Hmm, okay, 0.8 maybe. That looks not too bad. And that means that my um, theme toggle hover, and I'm guessing that's also on the focus. 
yeah. So also, so my theme toggle hover and my uh, theme toggle focus um, are both getting a few different things. So they're going to get a background of Let's do an HSL and I'll explain why. HSL is just really easy to switch from white to black. So we're going to start with an HSL um, and do a 0, 0%, zero 0%. Percent, zero percent? No, I'm going to do a 50%. Um, so if I do that, um, that should give us a gray background. And the advantage with doing it at a 50% gray is uh, if I play with the, so if we come here and we say it's like 0 0.2, so this is the opacity. So we've, we've lowered the opacity and I think theirs is even lower, but I'll leave it like that. So it's a 50% gray. So a 50% gray on top of white will make it look darker. But if we switch our uh, body background to black, which eventually we will, when we hover on top, you can actually see that 50% gray is making it lighter. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, or it's selected now, but when we see there, it's getting lighter. And then we go that way. When I hover, it's getting darker. Uh, so I think that will work out perfectly fine. So there we go. Um, there are a few things that we will need to do. Let's give this some padding of, I'm going to do it. Um, the padding here, like I'm making my button really big. So it depends a little bit on how you're going to do it. Uh, but since I have a big button, we'll do like four rem and we'll see what that looks like. But obviously the size of your button, um, will have a big impact on that. And then we can also say, so padding four rem and then a border, uh, radius of 50% to make it a circle. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good compared to what we have there. There's is, as I said, much lighter. Um, oh, and there's another thing. The opacity is also going to go up. Uh, opac opacity of one. Uh, cause again here, when I have her on top, the whole thing gets a little bit darker. So there we go. I think that's good. And we'll just drop this to a point one. And I think that's actually a pretty good start to that. All right. Um, a few things that I will need. Uh, I think what we're going to do is come all the way to the top here and I'm going to use some custom properties for this because I do think it's going to be the easiest way um, to eventually do this. So on my root, let's set a color foreground. Uh, once again, let's just use HSL. So zero, zero percent foreground is the front. So zero percent, or what, uh, yeah, zero percent. I'll just do over one, but or, uh, so that's going to be black. And then my color background will be an HSL zero, zero percent, 100 percent, uh, which is pure white. So nice and easy uh, way to get black and white. And so that means on my body, we want to say the background is my var color background. That's right. And that my color is var color foreground. And now I'm on a computer, I have dark mode enabled. So one thing that we should be able to do with this is I should be able to use a media query right away. Um, so at prefers uh, at media at media prefers color scheme dark. And what I could do is take these, copy them, paste them, and we just need to inverse them. So this would become my background and this one would become my foreground. And there we go, it worked. Uh, so because I am on a prefers color scheme dark, that's working. And then if we go to turn that off or if I change my user or my preferences in my system, it goes the other way. Now my button obviously also needs to change because we can't see it. So that means that my theme toggle, uh, so let's just say uh, theme, theme toggle SVG as a fill of var color foreground. And there we go, it's working. And when we hover on top, we can see it gets lighter. And then right, now I can't click. Now we, so now there's, there's one issue with this actually right now. So I'm gonna turn it off for the moment. I'm just trying to think. Uh, so I mean, this works, but the problem is it's the wrong icon now, <laughs> um, which is a little bit of an issue. Is it that pale when we're here? It's pretty pale. I'm actually going to boost that up to like a 0.15 though, because I find that on the gray, this there, that looks a little better. Cool. Um, so yeah, it, it's functional, but it's the wrong icon. So we're actually going to have to build in some things now that are going to change. the. So I think what we're going to actually need to do, so this is going to work and it's nice because it will automatically choose based on the user's preference. Um, but I'm also going to come in here and let's just copy you. And let's copy this one. 
Uh, so I don't know if it's getting a little redundant, but let's we're gonna set this as a dot light theme and a dot dark theme. And we're gonna use some JavaScript to toggle on the body. And that's sort of what's going to be used to um, play with this. So we'll also, I'm wondering if we might be able to get rid of this, but I think I would leave it anyway, just in case like this way, even if the JavaScript fails for some reason, or somebody has JavaScript disabled, um, they can still get the color scheme that they want. That's the thought right now. <laughs> um, but let's see. Uh, I think most of the CSS is done except for the animations, but it's going to be a lot easier once we add some JavaScript. So let's go and add the JavaScript now. Uh, so first thing I'll do is just <laughs> let's uh, link to a JavaScript file. So we need our script source and we'll just call it um, well, whatever theme toggle.js. And let's go add that new file here theme toggle.js. Okay, so what's what do we need? I actually think the only thing we need is our theme toggler, which is equal to document.query selector. Um, I'm gonna turn word wrap off for now, I guess. There we go. Um, so we have my query selector and that is my theme toggle. Cool. Um, so let's just do a quick um, theme toggle dot add event listener on click. So we're going to listen for if somebody clicks on it. And then if somebody clicks on it, we want to do something. So we'll put in a function. And this is why I like writing CSS with CSS, the, <laughs> the line wrapping and stuff, the, the short lines are nice uh, compared to a JavaScript. <laughs> uh, so here we go. If we want to do something, that just makes it easier for recording. I mean, uh, so here, theme toggle, add event and listener, click. So when somebody clicks, what do we want to do? Um, so let's choose my body class. Except I'm just trying to think the best way to do this. Okay, let's just, let's just do something really fast. Um, so um, document body class list um, dot contain. So, so you know what though, because because I want to be able to switch from the light and the dark one there. I'm just trying to think the easiest way to do this. Um, Okay, because we sort of want to, okay, I don't want to write a whole if statement. So what I'm going to do here is let's, uh, let's make a function called um, enable dark mode. And then what are we going to do? We're going to do a document dot body dot class list dot contains. No, if we're enabling dark mode, uh, so first we want to remove. So we're going to remove and uh, we're going to remove light theme, which is the, the light one. And I know we haven't actually put that anywhere yet, but we're going to remove light theme. And then we're going to do a document dot body dot class list dot add. And there's a reason that I'm not doing like a toggle for dark mode on and off. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, we're going to add in a dark theme. Uh, and then we can come in with a very similar one for enable uh, not dark light mode. And that's just going to be uh, an add here and a remove there and just to keep things in the same order. There we go. So then what we can say here is uh, document.body, and maybe I should have made a const for this or something, but whatever, uh, class list um, dot contains, contains light, uh, we're gonna say contains light mode, or light theme, right, light theme. And we're gonna put a question mark and because then what you can do is we can say that does it contain light theme? It does. If it does, we want to uh, enable dark mode. And if it doesn't, we want to enable light mode. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. <laughs> so document.body.classlist contains light theme, question <laughs> mark. If it does, we're going to enable dark mode. If it doesn't, we're enabling light mode. So we're running the functions that we've created down here. So this could be a total failure or it could work, but it's working. Yes. <laughs> cool. Um, so there, there we go. And as I said, we could have had something that's going to toggle a theme on and off. So we, we just have dark theme and we can remove and add it. Then we wouldn't really need to do this. Um, but I do like the explicitness of it. I think, I, th I think it's going to help us out um, because we need to do a little bit more with it too, with our ARIA labels and stuff. Um, so I do, I do think that this is going to make sense. 
Um, but that's a good start. So that's working. So now, um, because of that, we do have our area label that does, um, if you remember here, I made the area label of switch to dark theme. Now, if I click here, we don't, we need it to, you know, an area label of switch to dark theme doesn't make sense. We now need that area label to be switched to light theme. So to do that, when we enable dark mode, we're going to come in here and we need to do a theme toggle. So we're selecting the button itself and we do have an area label that we can use. Um, so area label will be equal to uh, switch to switch to light theme, right? Light theme. Because we're in dark mode, the button will now switch to light theme. So let's copy that one and paste that there and that can say switch to dark theme. So if that worked properly, let's go and inspect this guy here. Um, so we do see my button right there and it says switch to dark theme. Um, so let's see if this works. If I click on it, uh, now I click, oh, it's not working. Did I save my file? Is it just not working? Let's see. Oh, so we can see this is working. So my function is working, but theme toggle. Three hours later. All right, so a fun note here. I just did a little bit of research on why my area label wasn't switching. And it turns out it is. Um, if I come and I open my dev tools here. So this is in Chrome. And if we look here in Chrome, we can actually see here where it says switch to dark theme is switching back and forth. Cool, right? Um, but then what happened is uh, I wasn't working, so I looked it up and just to make sure I was doing it right. And look at this, it's not, the, um, it's not supported in Firefox, uh, which sucks because it's been around for a little while. Um, now, that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It'd be nice if we could do that in Firefox as well. Uh, but you know there are other ways of changing attributes and stuff. So it's not the end of the world. It just means this has to get a little bit longer. Um, so here, instead of doing area label, we're going to do a set attribute. And the set attribute's a little bit different. So here, instead of that, we're going to do this. And then I'll close this over here. And we just have to tell it what we want to set, right? So this would be the name of the attribute. So that was area label. So my area label will go switch to um, the light theme. And then let's just copy that, paste it down here. And then this will be switched to dark theme. So let's see if that worked now. Um, and the advantage here is if this works here, it will work in all the browsers. So um, here is my area label. It looks like it is working. There we go. So I didn't realize that wasn't supported in Firefox, but luckily it's not that much harder to do it, but it's nice when they come up with these new uh, new ways of doing things that do make our lives a little bit easier. So hopefully um, we do get that in the not too distant future uh, in Firefox. Um, I think we've set most things up. There's one last thing that we're gonna do, but I'm gonna, let's, let's get a few different things done here. Um, so theme, let's come here. I'm gonna say that my um, theme toggle, we'll do an after is uh, we need that to have content. And for the content of this, actually, usually I give it blank content, but we don't wanna give it blank content. We're gonna say attribute, ATTR. Uh, this is a function, so ATTR, open, close, parens. And then in here, we can write in area label. And let's just give it a display. Uh, let's just hit save and see even if, if that, there it is, switch to dark theme. You can see it right there. Uh, you can see it's changing the shape of my button because it is within the button. So I am going to come on this and say position is absolute. Whoops, absolute. And I'm also gonna come up onto the theme toggle itself. Um, and I'm gonna say that here we have a po position of relative. There we go. Um, just so it's gonna make it easier to get this to go where I want it to. And that's to get this little guy, like the, the tool tip that we're getting right there. Uh, you do wanna be careful with tool tips. So um, if anybody is an accessibility expert, you can tell me what you think about this and doing it like this. I'm trying to match what Google did. And this to me is the way, I don't know if this is how they did it, but I'm assuming it is because it does follow uh, their theming um, and stuff. So I'm guessing this is how they did it because uh, I know they have an area label on there. So, um, and because it's not text that can't be read. I, I guess it could potentially be read twice um, by a screen reader because some screen readers read pseudo elements, some of them don't. So maybe it would read the area label and the pseudo element. I'm not sure. Um, so if you do know, please let me know uh, if there is a different approach that we could use for this. 
Um, I get, I know. I guess one way we could do it is actually to have like um, a screen reader hidden element in here as well. But I'm trying to clone this as closely as possible. And as far as I can tell, they didn't. They don't have that um, in here. I see a few spans, um, so I don't see anything that would actually. Right? There's no like, I don't know. There's nothing in here that has that text. Um, the only thing it has the switch to light here on their area label. And if I do that, switch to dark. Yeah. So I'm going to do it like that, but if you know of a better way to do it, uh, but if you know of a more accessible way to do it, please let me know uh, in the comments. And if there's a good one that comes up, I'll pin it to the top. Um, all right, so that's there. So here, let's set this up a little bit more. The color on this color needs to be, or actually, let's just take a look here. The color is the opposite. Okay, so the color on that is going to be var color background. And the background of it will be var color foreground. There we go. Um, we're going to give this a width of max content because it's always going to be one line. So there we go. Max content will fit the width of the text exactly or the content itself. Um, so it keeps it always on one line. The font size here is tiny. So font size, let's just say to rem. Again, I have a really big button. If you're matching this, you'd probably want to play. Maybe that's a bit big. Uh, 1.5 rem. And then we're going to say, uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give this a left of zero and a right of zero. And that it's going to, so this is an interesting thing with position absolute. Um, if I didn't give this a width, so if I take the width off, it's going to take that whole space available to it. But because I have a width on there, it's going to use that width. But by doing the left and right uh, of zero here, it means I can do a margin of auto. Uh, to say margin, yeah, we'll say margin zero auto. Uh, so the left and right become auto and you can center it. If you don't have this here, it, it doesn't have that availability to it and it sort of bugs out as you can see. So um, the margin auto will work only if the left and right are zero even, and with the width. So you sort of need all of those on there. And then we can just say that the top is, um, top is going to be what, 100%? Um, I guess we can do 90, 90%. There we go. 95, something like that. Let's get it. Perfect. I'm happy with that. Um, I have a margin. We'll add my padding here. Padding of 0.5 M, 1 M maybe. It's probably a bit too much. Usually left and right tends to be a little bit bigger. Um, that looks pretty good though. Maybe we could stick with one actually. One, we'll give this a border radius of 0.125 M just around the corners off a little bit. So that looks pretty good. And there's definitely a lower opacity on this because you can, uh, I think, yeah, I can see through it a little bit. So we're going to say that the opacity is like a 0 0.8, 0 0.9. It's pretty high. That looks pretty good. Oh, and that's interesting that it darkens even when I hover, which I don't think there's, ooh. Oh, but we're not going to see it. So actually, we're going to have to play with this a little bit. We're going to say that the opacity on this is maybe a 0.7 then. That looks a bit better. Um, because normally we're not going to see it. <laughs> um, so let's give this a opacity of zero or uh, there actually. So the opacity is going to be, z let's just see, like it sort of fades in, right? And grows. So the opacity is going to, I just leave that there so we can see what we're doing. <laughs> and then I'm going to do a transform scale of zero. So it will disappear and we'll drop my opacity. And then what I want to do is my, like, we're going to move this up here because um, here's my hover and focus. So I do want this um, to be on here. So we're going to say hover theme toggle hover after and it's on hover and it's also when I tab. So it's on my hover and on my focus state. So we can select it like that. And then what do we want to do? We want the opacity. I think it was 0.7 I said and then the transform scale of one. So now, oh, and we want to transition it, right? Uh, tran transition, um, transform, it's pretty fast, 200 milliseconds linear and opacity 200 milliseconds linear. Let's just do that. That's way too slow. 75, maybe 70. So I think that's not 
theirs is even faster, I think. Um, and there is another difference. Theirs is lower down, but that's okay. Um, the other difference that's happening here is it's growing from the middle. I don't want it to grow from the middle. If you see here, it sort of grows. It's really fast, um, but it looks like it's growing in from the top. So transform, and then we can do a transform origin of top. So now it grows in more from the top. And you know what? Mine's going in and out. Theirs is only growing this way, and then it just, oh. The opacity goes that way. So what I'm going to do, this, uh, we'll copy this whole thing, but I'm going to delete this. So my opacity is always going to transform both directions, but here we're going to do my transition for both of them. Uh, not there, whoops, on this one. And so if we hit save on that, it should transform both ways this way, but only the opacity on the way out. But the opacity on the way out is not working. Transition opacity, fast, and then slow. Why isn't the opacity transitioning? What if I just put this one to zero then? Oh, I know what's happening. So my when I go off... Okay, no, I know what I can do here. Um, there are ways that you could do like a JavaScript listener and stuff. So here, let's keep this at like, um, we'll keep this one at, we'll do 100 milliseconds on the way out. Um, so it's gonna go 100 milliseconds. So what we're gonna say here on this transition is um, it's zero, but we're gonna delay it by um, 200 or 100, it doesn't matter, the opacity is disappearing. Um, because we need to delay the tr we need this transform not to happen until the opacity is finished. Uh, so basically, I don't care about this part of it. I just care about this delay. So it's going to disappear, and then this second part of the animation can run. So when we go on, we're transitioning both, and when we go the other way, we're just we're fading out that, and we should get it on focus two and out. Now with the focus, we also want to say um, outline. Of zero, which normally uh, I'm not a big fan of, but we have enough other things happening here and we're trying to match what Google did here. And there we go. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. Now we want to get this animation happening too, right? <laughs> when we switch between the two. So when we're going to start in the dark theme, because that's more of our default one. So this is going to be um, dot light theme. That's my body, right? I have my body class is switching from light to dark theme. Did I do that? Do we have that? There, yeah, okay. So there we go, that's happening. Um, so remember that's when here I did this, which is enable light mode and dark mode, which is switching the class here, enabling, whoops, we're switching the my body class uh, to light and dark. So now when I click on that, we can see that jumping back and forth. So it just means that my, we're gonna do both of these. Uh, they're probably gonna be different, I guess, eh? So my toggle circle, is going to have a transition of tran, trans, transition, transform, uh, I don't know, 250 milliseconds. I'm gonna do linear and we're gonna play with it. There we go. Cool, and let's see how theirs looks. So it's probably just an ease in, is my guess. There we go. And we, we could find the exact timing. We might have to. We might actually have to play with that a little bit. Or is it ease in or ease out that I want? Oh, that's better. Ease out is better. Yeah, it sort of slows down near the end. It looks a little bit more natural. Okay, so that's working. And then we also want my spin. And that spins, I, I can't use the same transform because that spin, you'll notice it It spins and then it comes back a little bit. It like overspins and then comes back a little bit. Um, so on my light theme, yeah, I'm trying to... I'm treating dark theme as the default state. So let's leave it here. Um, so this is my toggle sun, I think I called it. Was that what I called it? Toggle sun, it is, okay. Um, so this one, instead of a trend, I'm gonna do a turn. Let's just do one turn and see what happens. So if I click, it should spin. Or not, oh, not turn, <laughs> turn, turn, rotate, one turn. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What is happening? Um, okay. 
dot toggle sun, fingers crossed, transform origin center. Hopefully that doesn't work. Ah, oh, origin. Wow, my goodness. Okay, let's add, let's tra transition, transform, transform, 500 milliseconds ease. Um, we're gonna have, whoa, it is the transform origin that's off. Look at that guy go. <laughs> Trans, transform or origin center. No? Center, center. 50%. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I just found out what's causing the issue. Let's go. I didn't see this when I did that. I must have made a mistake when I made my SVG. I had, there's a default transform on here. That's kind of weird. Let's see what that's going to do if I get rid of it. Apparently nothing. <laughs> Um, so actually now it's, now it's off, off, like now it's in the wrong spot. So this is coming from my, my SVG. Um, so I made a mistake when I made my SVG. Let's come back in here really fast. Um, I don't get why that's happening, but we're going to fix it. Um, so actually what I'm going to do is let's break this up. Like I said, so this, oh, new layer. Uh, so this is my circle. This one is my sun. Um, I don't know if this is going to fix it or not, but we're going to do one other thing, which is to change my artboard properties. Artboard is going to be fit to selected art, not selected, fit to fit to artwork bounds. Let's try copying that again. We're going to jump back over to VS Code. SVG. Paste that in and see what... So let's see, is there a transform on this guy again? There's no transform. So I just, something weird happened there. And you'll notice here, like I don't need these classes anymore, um, but you'll notice that now it automatically came in with these IDs and the G just means group. Um, so it shouldn't actually change anything. I can get rid of my depths because I don't need them. Hit save, circle, sun, these are IDs. So let's do um, class, whoops. Class is equal to theme, uh, toggle, toggle, circle and toggle sun class hit save on that and fingers crossed that looks okay aha it worked it worked it worked okay it's just spinning way too much now <laughs> but i'm so happy that was my fault and not something that i was doing wrong in the code um so let's see that's still spinning a lot holy moly okay that looks a little better right let's see there's Yeah, I think it's a half turn. It looks like a lot, but then when you do it, like it does a lot there. Um, so now actually to do this, I am going to do my inspect on here and I want to get my sun. Um, so because what I want to do is actually come on this transition here and I want to play with it a little bit. And I'm in fire. I wonder if I can move this up and more on screen for you guys. Whoops. There we go. It's more on screen. Um, so basically what I want it to do is I want it to go past this point here. Um, so we're going to I think it starts off, let me just see theirs. It starts really fast and then it goes too far and then slowly comes back. So yeah, I want it to go start pretty fast, go a little bit too far and then come back a little bit. And the nice thing here is in the dev tools, you play with it, you can see what it looks like and then you can test it out. Uh, so you can see it's working, it's just ugly. <laughs> um, that, that way back is not pretty. So I'm actually going to stretch that out more. It's a little bit better. There's is so gentle at the end. All right, so I played with it. I sort of ended up back at this point, but I sort of think that's good. I think, I, I don't know, I can't really get it better than this. Uh, so what we're gonna do is copy this whole line here. So we'll just do a copy on that um, and bring it in. So that's on my sun. So we're gonna replace this with this one. Uh, and hit save. But I think what we're also gonna do is make it a little bit slower. Um, so let's try 750 milliseconds. Oh, that's a lot better, eh? There we go. Let's see here. Even that, this one maybe, 
we could bring up to 500. So the circle will be like 500 because it definitely looks like the circle. Oh, they're almost. Yeah, the circle gets there just as like the sun starts reversing direction a little bit. So I'm pretty, I think that's actually pretty good timing. Ah, cool. Okay, so we're getting there. We're almost there. Uh, there is a few more things though that I need to do. One of them is if I refresh my page right now, uh, I'm in dark mode. And say we go to light mode and I refresh my page, I'm in dark mode. And that's because I have my prefers um, color scheme on. Um, but the problem with that is if, if I like say somebody prefers lights, the light mode, they're still getting, they're getting the wrong symbol at this point um, to start with. So what we actually need to do is we need to check using JavaScript, which, um, which color scheme they want to be able to start with the icon in the right spot. Um, so what we're going to do is go back into my theme toggler and think about this for a second. <laughs> um, so let's do a function called, um, set theme, theme preference. And the main thing that we want it to do is, um, document on, on, uh, load will be equal to, uh, set theme preference. Uh, so the idea is when the document is loaded, it's going to check to see what the user's preference is, their system preference for light or dark theme. And that way it can add the right class to it. And then that's going to make sure that we have the right icon from the very beginning. And so we just need to make this function actually work now. So uh, we don't need it on any other time. I think we only need it when the document is loaded. And then after that, it doesn't really matter too much. So yeah, we'll leave it just like that. And let's see what we can figure out here. All right, so um, I think the easiest thing here is going to be an if. So we, what we can do say is um, if um, it's window dot, and you can do match media. And match media means you can look for any media query you want. Uh, it is a string, so you put in the quotation marks. And one thing to be careful with here, because we are looking at like this, like this is the string here. So that includes the parentheses. <laughs> Right, so here you want to inside your string include those um, parentheses. So we say if window match media uh, prefers color scheme dark, and to check if it if it is prefers color scheme dark, we can do a dot matches right there. Um, this is, works in all modern um, browsers, and if ever you're on a not so modern browser and it just fails, it's not going to be the end of the world uh, at all. It gets skipped, but we have so many other things that are sort of fallbacks for this. Um, anyway, it's just going to change how our icon is set up a little bit. Uh, but let's see if it's working first. So if it matches, what are we going to do? Um, so let's just say uh, console log is uh, I like it dark. And then we're going to do a return. So it, if that happens, then we can get out of our function. And if not, we can console log I like it light. And let's just see to test if this is working. So. Um, I've broken something along the way, clearly, because we just switched. Oh, no, I turned off my, uh, I didn't save, but I turned off the, this here. Okay, good. Um, so that's working. Now what I want to do is let's jump on over here and check my uh, dev tools. So in the console here, we should see, and we do, I like it dark. Um, and then actually what I'm going to do is uh, I wasn't going to open it in this, but we're going to check out polypane. So polypane is a development browser. It's really cool. It's good for responsiveness. As you can see here, there's like multiple uh, viewports all in view at the same time. It's live review. Like, you know, you can see if I'm updating one, they're all doing it with browser sync and some cool stuff going on there. Um, but what I want to do, and one of the things there's really good accessibility testing and stuff. They're not sponsoring this, by the way. It's just, I think it's a cool product. Um, but one of the things you can do in here is you do have, as I said, there's accessibility testing and more, but we can check out our dev tools. And so you can see here, it says, I like it dark. And that's because we, in our system preferences, I like it dark. Um, but instead of having to change the system preferences, you can come in and I clicked on the wrong thing. And right here, I can actually change my prefers, um, color scheme. So I switched that one to light. And now if I refresh the page, let's hope. I like it light. There we go. Awesome. So we know it's working. So I have an I like it light right now and we switch back and forth um, pretty easily. So let's keep polypane open actually because it's going to let us test these at the same time. Um, so what we're going to do here instead of console logging stuff, we can just do an enable dark mode right there. And this one we can get rid of it and do an enable enable light mode. Um, right. That makes sense. So let's hit save and there we go. We can see, um, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe this one was on light mode. 
that's on light mode too. There we go. Um, so we can do that to dark. Um, we have to fix my media query so that actually works, but you can see they're both working. So let's refresh. And this one was set to light. Those ones are set to dark. This one, if I switch this to light and we hit refresh and there we go. Um, so again, the nice thing with this is at the beginning, if somebody lands on the page, it's going to be the right icon for depending on their color, their color scheme preferences um, that they have for their browser. But we also want to make sure that everything is working. So I am, I am going to stick this on. I think it's a little bit redundant having both. I don't know if we need both, but it doesn't hurt having like five extra lines of CSS. Um, and again, if for some reason the JavaScript fails, I think that that gets us pretty far. Um, and it's cool seeing them both go at the same time. <laughs> So there we go. Uh, we have both of them that are working and for both color schemes, we can go back and forth. Now there's a little bit more, I think, uh, that I want to do here. So let's close down. And um, so one of them is, uh, it's an issue now is it sticks. So like when I click and then I move away, I still have this and that. Whereas here, if I click and then I move away, you can see that the after is going away. It's still selected actually. Um, oh, and you know what? There's a pulse that's going on in the background there when I click too. Okay, so we got two more things to do. Um, so let's actually, let's do the pulse first and then we're gonna make that so it can disappear because it's pretty easy to do. I think the pulse is gonna be a bit more work. Um, so let's do the pulse first. So for that, I think because it happens and then it goes away, like if it went and stayed, I could just use a transition um, between like my active or my, what is it? I could, anyway, we could use a transition somewhere in there, but because it goes and then goes away, I am going to come all the way down and let's just come in with some keyframes. Keyframes, we'll call it a uh, pulse. Um, so what's my keyframes pulse? It's just gonna be, it's really fast. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna open up my inspect here. Um, oh, I'm in Firefox. Usually, let's see if we have it even in here. Do we have one in here? <laughs> I use different browsers for different sorts of debugging. There must be something in here, but I know where it is in Chrome. So let's <laughs> let's open this up in Chrome instead of searching around too much. Um, all right, so here's Google Fonts in Chrome. And the reason I want to do it in Chrome is because uh, if I go to here, I can go to do, 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 it's here, and I go to More Tools, and I go to Animations. And what I like about it is, like, if I do this, it's going to find, it found all the animations that were happening. Um, as it switched. So now I just have to find this one and you, when you hover over, you see it happen. So you can see that's where it's happening. So I'm gonna click there. Um, and here, let's just make this a bit bigger for a second. Usually if you do this, you actually see it happen over here, which I don't see happening, but that's okay. Um, what I'm gonna do is just do 25% <laughs> and then click. Ah, it was the right one. So see how it's really slow? So you can see now it's pulsing out. Um, and so we have, it grows out and then disappears. And then it grows out and it disappears. Um, so you can play around and there's even ripple map, ripple element, and there's the opacity that goes up and then back down. So maybe it's that, and you can play around with it um, in here and stuff. I'm not gonna deep dive the animation one. I just wanted to slow it down so we could see what was actually happening there. And now that we know what was happening, whoopsie, let's get out of here. Um, let's build that in. So at 0%, um, I want a transform of scale 0 because it, it starts small and it's going to grow bigger. And we're going to say an opacity opacity of, I don't know, 0.5, right? Like it, it, if we looked at that graph where we saw it, it I think it starts with some opacity. Um, then when we click that, I'm just trying to think, oh, I wasn't working before because I was in Firefox, but so it, it grows really fast. It's growing, it looks almost instant. So I think there is a growth, but it's really fast. And then it's more based on the opacity. So we're going to say at like 30, 30%, uh, we're going to have a transform of scale one and opacity can be at, I don't want to have an opacity. I'm going to skip opacity on this one and see if that works. Then at like 75%, we're going to have our, yeah, spell things right. <laughs> uh, transform. I'm going to, let's, we'll skip that. Uh, I'm going to say opacity here is at one. And then it, it sort of faded out at the end. So at 100%, the opacity will go back to zero. 
because it does it definitely fades out at the end it doesn't just disappear um, and I'm just going to stick this here at the last keyframe just to make sure um, that makes sense I'm not sure if we need it but we're gonna do that um, so to do that where are we gonna do it we already have our after so we're gonna use a before I think uh, so my theme toggle before we'll have a content of uh, nothing it's just decorative so we can leave blank content position absolute probably yeah um, let's give it a background that stands out background of I've been using lime green a ton so we're gonna go with lime green uh, just so we can really see it and then we can play with the color of it after so background lime green um, inset of zero because it's position absolute and with that I'm gonna move this line down just uh, that's good border radius I'll just do an inherit in a match that way if ever the border radius changed um, it would also be changing over here um, and then I'm gonna do a transform scale of zero so it's gonna start at zero just so we don't see it and an opacity of zero just so it's it's always hiding on us <laughs> Right, um, and then how are we gonna do it actually? When we click, we need it to have the animation to happen. So if we do dot light theme, and you know what, we might have to do two animations. Okay, uh, light theme, uh, theme toggle before, we'll get an animation on animation, pulse um, so it's pulsing we'll do 500 milliseconds uh, I'm gonna do linear for now we can always play with it so if I click there we go we saw that right um, so there we go it whoop, and then disappears now one problem is it's on top of everything so I am gonna come here and I'm gonna do a Z index of negative one now with that it might disappear actually it's gonna work just because the uh, I can leave it like that um, if ever this was with other things that had backgrounds, it could get lost. So I am going to do an isolation of isolate here, which creates a new stacking context. And it just means it can't escape outside of my button. Um, but there we go. That's going to fly open like that. And I just thought of something that anyway, we'll, we'll leave it like that for now. Um, I think what we're going to actually do is an ease out on that. Um, just to slow down the animation, or maybe I could just change this to 750 actually. <laughs> um, 750, let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's not bad actually. And then it fades away. 650, a little bit faster maybe. So you click, it comes in and then fades out. It comes in and fades out. I think there's actually, let's just go back down to my keyframes. This is going to be at like 10%. It grows out so fast on theirs. It doesn't even look like it's growing, but when I slowed it down, you definitely saw it. There we go. Okay, we'll go with that. And then it fades away. I think that's good. Now it looks really, really harsh, but I think that's just because of the color that I have on it. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do is once, you get, once again, an HSL, HSL of zero zero percent and then is the 50 going to work again 50 percent over like 0.2 um so that should darken it when we go that way now the problem is i can't if we take this and we say dark theme it's not going to work the other way around and now it's not going to work anywhere and the reason for that is we've put the animation on and the animation is still there. It's not going to restart the animation when we click on it. So we could use JavaScript to go in and actually like remove the animation um, once it's finished. But you know, I could just come here and we could do this as my pulse uh, to pulse to light, and then we could just copy this same thing and have a pulse to dark. Um, I don't know if this is maybe a JavaScript doing it would be better. I'm not sure. Um, so that means here my light theme is the animation is pulse to light and then here would be pulse to dark. Ah, there we go. Cool, right? And again, the nice thing with this is by just using this like transparent gray, uh, it works. It gets darker, it gets lighter. 
just like that one gets lighter that way and darker that way. Ooh, ooh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty cool. So the last thing I want to do is just make it so when we move our mouse off after we've clicked that the that um, suit element disappears, which is nice and easy, as I said. Um, so that is my after. Um, so for that, actually, all we need to do is here where we have the focus on this, I'm just going to switch that to a focus visible and focus visible is amazing where uh, you can see it's there. But then when I come off, it goes away and comes on goes. Um, so basically it means if you're keyboard navigating, it will like keep it, uh, when it gains focus that way. But if you do it with the mouse and you click, it's not actually the focus visible is not doing it. And it's, it's really based on the browser determining how the behavior should work, but it's really, really cool. Basically it means mouse interactions won't have it gain that state. Whereas with a focus it can, and with buttons, sometimes that can be annoying. Like in this case, you don't want it to keep that. Uh, but I did see that they've kept the background. So I'm going to do that. When you click on it, it's still there. Very subtle. Uh, or if I click that way, it stays there. It's very subtle. Uh, but the, the tool tip that we made goes and comes just like that. Now that was a lot of fun. And if you liked this video and you like the idea of cloning things, you probably really like this video right here where I cloned the pop dog uh, card that was really cool and has different animations and fun things happening with it. And if you'd like to further dive into the worlds of light modes and dark modes, I have a couple of videos in a dedicated playlist right here that dives into that side of things. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.